Hello Hawthorne fans, welcome back to Hawthorne HQ. For my second ever video on the channel, we will be grading every Hawks player to have received AFL game time in 2023. This season, 35 players played a senior game, so we have a lot to get through. Let's get straight into the video. All right, first up, we have Harry Morrison. Morrison had a bit of a frustrating 2023. He played eight less games this year and averaged 18.5 disposals per game at 70% efficiency and about two and a half inside 50s per game, which is a little bit low for his position. Obviously, Morrison was a low draft pick back in 2016, so we won't hold him to the same standards as say like a Bailey Smith or a Blake Akers, but at this stage of his career, he's probably played enough footy to see better numbers than this. I think the issue with Morrison is that he doesn't really have that damaging leg speed. He's a decent ball user when he isn't under pressure, but I am beginning to have doubts on whether Morrison is the ideal wing option moving forward in our rebuild. He hasn't been bad by any means though, so I will be giving him a C for this year. Next up, we have the big man, Mitch Lewis. Lewis followed up a breakthrough season in 2022 with a very impressive 2023 campaign. The only frustrating thing about Mitch Lewis is that he doesn't stay on the park for a full season. I actually saw a stat the other day that he hasn't played more than 15 games in a single season, which is a little bit of a worry. Obviously, at his best, he's one of the more damaging key forwards in the comp and honestly would be pretty underrated by most. This year, he averaged 2.4 goals per game, 2.7 marks inside 50, and 1.3 contested marks per game, which is indicative that he's making an impact when the ball comes his way. I think when he gets his body right and can contend more with some of the premier key defenders more often, we could see Lewis notch up a cheeky All-Australian squad. I'm going to give Lewis an A-, minus just because he couldn't keep himself on the park this year, but I really liked what I saw. All right, our third player that we will be rating is Jai Newcomb. I think every Hawk supporter went into this year knowing what Duke could be capable of, but I don't really think too many of us would have thought he'd make the All-Australian squad at just 22 years old. He stepped up big time with a mass exodus of experienced midfielders from our side and put up some huge numbers of 25 disposals, 11 contested possessions, 5.5 clearances and 6.4 score involvements, which is right up there with some of the elite mids of the comp. He also really tidied up his disposal this year as well, traveling at about 77%. Newcomb has established himself as one of the best clearance players in the AFL at such a young age, and I don't think I'm alone in believing this guy could achieve some really special things in his career. A+. Plus. All right, Jarman Impey. He was one of our more underrated players since being brought over from Port in 2018. Jars definitely showed a lot of improvement this year and is steadily emerging as one of our leaders on the field. One thing you'll always get with Jars is 100% effort every game. In 2023, he showed his ability to rack up a lot of touches and be damaging with the footy, averaging about 21 disposals at 76% and had multiple 25 plus disposal games. The defensive side of his games was exposed at times this year and there's something he will have to work on should he keep his spot on the side with some young talent emerging in that part of the ground. Overall, he had a pretty good year, but nothing special. I think this is a solid B. All right, the Warpedo is probably thanking his lucky stars that we moved on Tom Mitchell and O'Meara. Some would say that this year was a make or break for his career, and boy, did he step up big time. After the first few games of the year, it was clear Warps really went to work on his contest and clearance work over the offseason, and we finally saw his best and fairest winning form from 2019. This year, he averaged 26 disposals, 12.4 contested possessions, and 6.5 and clearances per game. The only real criticism I have for his game is his disposal efficiency, but when you're putting up those sort of numbers out of the guts, I think that can be excused for the most part. If he can start to damage a bit more by foot, I have no doubt that he can become an elite midfielder of the competition. I'm going to give Warpedo an A-. minus. He was under immense pressure by selectors, fans, and media going into 2023, and he didn't just meet those expectations, he exceeded them by a long way. All right, do I even really need to say anything? You can't really give this guy anything other than an A-plus for this season. He made the All-Australian team and has cemented himself in the top five key defenders in the comp. He's easily the best intercept player in the league, and I have a feeling we would have conceded a lot more 10-goal losses this year if we didn't have Sis leading from the front. If he can stay on the park next season and not get any silly suspensions, then we can easily see him secure another All-Australian team selection. Congrats on an amazing season, Captain Sicily. Ned had a very interesting season. He got on top of a lot of the best rucks in the league this year, having standout performances against Gorn, English, 
and he completely dominated Rowan Marshall, which is pretty impressive. Overall this year, he had a 50% hitout win percentage and a 30% hitout to advantage percentage, which ranks him almost in the elite category for Ruckman. One thing I'd love to see Ned improve on for next season is his work rate around the ground. He was simply just outrun by fitter rucks this year and only averaged one and a half marks per game. And as someone who's 210 centimeters, that's not really good enough. He does get bullied by bigger bodies, so I expect that this offseason he'll be put to work in the gym and hopefully can develop a bigger tank. Overall though, 2023 was a step in the right direction for Ned, so I will say B-. minus. <sighs> I was not looking forward to grading Frosty to be honest. 2023 was definitely not a great year for him. One thing we've seen from Frosty in previous years is that he's always been a solid one-on-one -on -one shutdown defender and it has made it hard for opposition key forwards to get loose and take uncontested marks in D50, but it's clear he's starting to regress in this area of his game. James Blank has seemed to have taken over this role, and personally, I think Blanky is just better and more composed. Frost has just given away too many free kicks and made it too many mistakes in crucial moments this season, and while he was injured for the latter stage of the year, I just don't think I can see him be a permanent part of our defense in 2024 unless we don't manage to sign someone of higher quality. Pointing year from one of our senior players, he genuinely looked out of place at times, and when you're 30 in a team full of teenagers, that's just not really good enough, so we are gonna have our first fail grade of the video, Frosty gets a D. It was a damn shame CJ couldn't get on the park for more than eight games this year. I was really excited to see him tear up and maybe become one of the better rebounding defenders in the league, but sadly for him, he may need to wait until 2024. Obviously, CJ is an excitement machine. He just glides so effortlessly across the turf, and the way he plays suits Sam Mitchell's game plan to a T. If he can get his body right and maybe tidy up his foot skills coming out of defense, I think we can see CJ really damage some teams in 2024. There's not really much to go off for CJ, but he played pretty well when he was on the park, so I'll give him a C+. Alright, Carl Amon, our big money recruit from last offseason. He had a pretty solid first year in the brown and gold. He established himself as one of the elite wingers in the comp during his last couple seasons at Port. While he didn't really capture that same form for us this year, I think it can be excused as he did undertake a massive change in game plan and role for our team. His foot skills are still insane though, 23 disposals at 78% disposal efficiency, 4 inside 50s and 500 meters gained on average is still really good. I'll be excited to see what he can do next year, if we can snag Liam Henry or Bailey Smith, I think that'll be a really exciting wing duo. For all, a good season for Amon, hopefully we can see him break into the 40 man All Australian squad next year, I'm going to give him a B+. Next up we have Connor Nash, the Irishman had himself a really solid season, every year seems to be a big step in development and improvement for Nashi, and it seems like he's finally found a role he looks comfortable in. As an inside midfielder this year, he averaged 24 touches, 9 contested possessions and just under 5 clearances a game. Looking at those numbers, it's pretty impressive considering a few years ago he didn't look to have a future in our game at all, being tried as a key forward early on in his AFL career, and even as like a ruck backup for a little bit. His issue is obviously his foot skills, they've improved over the years for sure, but I reckon he may need to go to work on that should he be a mainstay in our 22 for the next couple of years. It does look like we will be drafting for some midfield class this year, so it'll be interesting to see where he stands in the next couple of years in terms of selection, but for 2023, I'm going to give him a B+. Alright, next up is Will Day. This guy was just Mr. Consistent all year long. At just 22, he already looks to be one of our most composed and reliable players, and he clearly shows great leadership out on the park for such a young player. His numbers are just great. Huge improvement from last year, especially since playing more of a midfield role this year. He averaged 26 disposals at 78%, five score involvements, four clearances, and 380 meters gained on average. Towards the latter half of the year, he was moved around quite a bit by Sam and played more of a Mr. Fix-It role where he kind of just went wherever we needed more cover or more quality and he just never disappointed. When he played in defense, he was able to take intercept marks, lock down opposition forwards, or even kickstart a surge from D50 and generate scores. This guy is just so tough, classy, and just works hard all day, and I can't wait to see him suit up in the brown and gold for years to come. A for Daisy. Dylan Moore is one of our most exciting players on his day. He just always seems to provide that spark and pops up for a goal whenever we desperately needed one this year. 
Just like 2022, he ran through the midfield at times this season with great effectiveness, and we rarely ever see a passage of play where he's not involved. While he's obviously super flashy with ball in hand and creates a lot of opportunities, it's clear he improved a lot with his defensive work this year, averaging about 20 pressure acts per game and making an impact at contests with seven contested possessions and five and a half ground ball gets per game. Very impressed with Dill this year and he's emerging as one of our leaders too. A- seems about right for this guy. He can, if he can work on his goal kicking, he can legitimately become a mini Toby Green. Next up, we have Jack Scrimshaw. I saw a lot of mixed opinions amongst Hawks fans about Scrim this year. A lot saying he should be a mainstay in our defense and others saying he isn't really good enough. And to be honest, I probably agree more with the former. Scrim has always been a pretty good ball user. He displays a lot of similarities to Grant Birchall in my opinion, but I think he showed a lot of improvement in his defense and pressure. We particularly saw that evident against Collingwood. It's just a bit disappointing he wasn't damaging enough this year. Bit of a step back for Scrim for sure, but I will say C since he didn't really show anything to warrant a fail grade. Dimmer is one of the most underrated defenders in the AFL and he just does not get enough recognition in the media for what he brings to the table. Every week he matches up against the opposition's best small to mid-sized forward and almost always nullifies their impact on the game. Notably this year he kept the likes of Cozzy Pickett, Cody Waitman twice, Toby Green and Jack Higgins all goalless and many more to just one goal. There's not really much to dislike about his game, he's a good ball user, he makes good decisions defensively and just looks so composed most of the time. B plus for Blake. Alright, next up is Lockie Bramble. Bramble saw a decent amount of game time this year, but just never really made enough of an impact unfortunately. I covered him in my delisting video and I just think that his weaknesses outweigh his strengths. While he does provide a lot of pace on the ball with his outside run, he just isn't damaging enough with the ball. I unfortunately do expect him to be delisted and I don't think anyone on the chopping block deserves a pass sadly, so I'm going to have to give him a D for 2023. Very disappointing first year in the brown and gold for Lloyd. We got him from Frio due to his elite athleticism and work rate as a ruckman, but we only ever saw glimpses of what he's capable of this year. He was just completely outclassed by opposition ruckman far too often and just looked off the pace except for that round 20 game against the Saints and he was dropped after that game anyway. I'd like to still see him get some games next year, but for the first year, he's going to get a big fail, D-. Very up and down year for Chad to say the least. Injuries kept him out for prolonged periods in 2023, and he did also have to play in the VFL for a couple of games to earn a spot in the first team. If you look at just his numbers, you could argue he deserves a fail, but I'm a big sucker for recency bias and he looked back to his best in those last few games of the season. C plus for Chad. Next up is Punky, our champion, most experienced and last standing premiership player. He had yet another outstanding season as a Hawk, cementing himself as the best small forward the game has seen in the last decade. He also got into the All-Australian squad, which was amazing to see. While he isn't as flashy and fast as he used to be, Punky just always finds a way to hit the scoreboard and is still one of the best front and center players in the comp, and he has been for the better part of a decade. Not much else I need to say here, to be honest. We all know that he deserves an A+. Alright, this is when it's going to start to get very interesting. Next up, we have Jacob Kashitsky. Overall, it was a frustrating year for Kozzi. It's the third year into his move up forward, and while he really showed improvement and provided a lot of positives and showed patches against some really good teams this year, he ultimately hasn't been consistent enough to warrant a pass grade. Too many times this year we saw him outbattled by weak defences and didn't hit the scoreboard enough to support Mitch Lewis. I do hope we see him go around again in the brown and gold next year. I think he's still very promising. He's playing good footy for Box Hill in the finals. But in terms of his AFL grade, I think Cozzy gets a D plus. He took some steps back this year. All right, next up we have DGB, our top 10 draft pick from 2020. Saw a move up forward this year after struggling to find form and breakthrough as a defender. He can take some nice clunks up forward and he's a beautiful kick of the footy. We just need to stay hopeful that he can have a breakout season in 2024 and show us Hawthorne fans some results, as I know a lot of us are starting to get very frustrated with his performances. He showed glimpses of being a nice third tall option next to Lewis and Cozzy, and hopefully we can see him get some more games into him next year. 
Sadly, he didn't show enough for a pass, so I'll have to give him a D. After a bit of a disappointing rookie year, Ward showed terrific improvement across all parts of his game this year. Out of the 16 games he played, he averaged about 20 touches at 78% efficiency, which actually ranks him as elite for an inside midfielder. I was impressed with his performances against really good midfields this year, particularly against the Blues and the Bombers. Overall, he had a really consistent year at AFL level, and I'm happy with his development so far. I'm excited to see what 2024 holds for Wardy, B-. Alright, next up we have Fergus Green. Ferg was very handy early in the season when Mitch Lewis was out through injury, and often battled against the opposition's best key defender, which is a little rough for a guy who's undersized for a key forward. He's not going to be in our best 22 next year if we re-sign him, but he will be a really handy depth player for us should we have more injuries up forward. For that reason, I'm going to give him a B. He did his job when he came into the team and he hit the scoreboard enough to have a positive season overall. I covered Longy in depth in my delisting video. He's such a good player in the VFL. He's a dominant ball winner who uses his size to his advantage. He just wasn't able to translate the same form into the AFL, which is a shame because we see so many big body midfielders dominating at the moment. I doubt he will be on our list next year, to be honest, and based on his performances at senior level, I can't give him higher than a D. Am I the only one who was disappointed with Frenchie's first year? He just didn't look at home at the top level, and we will cut him some slack since it is his first year. He actually had a good first month from rounds 1-4, to four, but just faded after that, and we didn't really see him shine until that belting against West Coast, and that big impactful last quarter he had against the Lions coming on as the sub. And then he faded again to obscurity at the end of the year and ultimately failed to get a Rising Star nomination. Ken McKenzie is probably the first genuine A-grade quality player we've drafted in a very long time. And I think I may have expected too much from a 19-year-old kid. However, it's clear a big preseason is needed under his belt to see those A-grade traits shine through. D plus for 2023. Jai missed a big portion of the year through pericarditis, which is a pretty serious heart condition. It's going to be pretty hard to grade him based off his two games for the year, one being as the sub. In his one full game this year, he gathered 15 disposals at 87% efficiency, which is decent considering he was playing more of a lockdown role against the Dockers. I'm going to give Jai a C-, minus just due to the fact that he managed to overcome a serious health issue. To come back and play AFL was just extraordinary. Hopefully we can see him get out onto the park a bit more next season, but we will need to re-sign him first as he is out of contract. Next up we have Sam Butler. The 20-year-old managed 8 games at senior level this season, which is one less than last year. He played most of his games through that middle patch of the year where we overcame the Lions and the Saints with his best performance coming against the Eagles with 1 goal and 16 touches. We also saw him pop up with a Goal of the Year nomination with that dribbler against Brisbane, which was cool to see. Overall, Butler was okay. He's a classy player who just lacks a bit of aggression, both offensively and defensively. I'd like to see him work on his forward 50 pressure, and since we are likely not to see Brockman and Wingard play next year, it'll be interesting to see where he fits. C-. Alright, C-Mac produced a brilliant season, playing as a half-forward midfield hybrid role in 2023. One thing we took from his rookie year is that he's a very classy ball user and has great goal sense, but one thing I was impressed by was his competitiveness around the contest in 2023. He showed great moments where he broke packs using his speed and was an excitement machine at times. We definitely found a gem at pick 26. He, along with Josh Weddle, look among our best draft picks so far since 2020. Very keen to see what he can achieve next year. I'm hoping we can give him more of a run through the guts as we desperately need better ball users in that part of the ground. Overall, A- minus for Connor seems about right. I was stoked to see Finn re-sign for another two years. He doesn't really rack up a lot of touches or impress with massive stat lines, but he plays his role, and that is to nullify the opposition's most impactful player. He gathered some huge scalps this year, tagging some of the game's most elite midfielders, and helped us get some wins late in the season. Fingers crossed we can see Finn add another layer to his game other than tagging, but for 2023, I'm going to give him a B- for his efforts. I was disappointed to see that Brocky will be seeking a move back home this offseason. 
2023 was a huge step in the right direction for him. We finally saw him get some decent game time in the AFL, and he showed glimpses of being a very good small forward. His work rate is definitely an issue and something I'd look out for if I was West Coast or Frio. C plus for Brocky. Next up, we have James Blank. Clearly, Blanky is becoming Sam Mitchell's preference for that lockdown defensive role over Frosty, and it's really hard to blame him. Blank just looks a lot more composed, makes less mistakes, and has taken some big steps in becoming a solid fullback at AFL level. Do I see him being the permanent option for that position for our next Premiership push? No, but for now, he's doing pretty well, I'd say. Enough for a passing grade, so I'm going to give him a C. Wow, what a debut season this kid had in 2023. Honestly, I didn't know much about Weddle after we drafted him last year. I was more so hyped about McKenzie, but it turned out that Weddle was more AFL ready out of the two. I think one thing that impressed me a lot about Weddle was how mature he looked at senior level, whether it was with ball in hand, dealing with defensive pressure, or shutting down his direct opponent. He just showed so much promise in all aspects of his game. He runs hard, he competes, and can play a variety of positions, whether it be halfback, third key defender, or even on the wing. He just looked so comfortable everywhere and even hit the scoreboard. It was very disappointing not seeing him get nominated for the 22 under 22 team, to be honest. I think he does deserve to be amongst the names in contention, considering he did earn himself a rising star nomination and was very consistent throughout the whole year. A for a brilliant debut season. Rammer only managed two senior games this season, despite playing very well through the VFL. In both these games, he was subbed out, and it's difficult not to blame Sam Mitchell for those decisions, to be honest. He had minimal impact. He's only 20 and is still a very raw, ruck forward prospect, but I think we were all hoping for some glimpses of what he can do in the future, and we just didn't see that, unfortunately. D for Max. The emergence of Shami was one of the big surprises of our season. He earned a rising star nomination, which I don't think any of us expected. It was great to see him step up in the absence of players like CJ, and he gave us that spark and pace off halfback. He's still very raw and needs to tidy up his ball usage a bit, but we can't be too critical of him considering he put together a very solid year after being delisted and we redrafted him as a rookie, so I'm going to give him B+. BMAC also managed just the two games this year. One of them was that horrible loss to Paul, which I had the displeasure of watching from the stands. But from what I saw, I think there's enough to suggest that BMAC has potential. And while I don't expect him to break through next year, barring any injuries, I'll be keen to see how he develops. He's a good ball user and shows a lot of potential as a run and carry type of player off halfback. So I won't be surprised if he features a few times again next year. Based off this season, I will give him a C minus. He looked okay in the games he played. Husty played the last two games of the season and immediately looked at home against the Demons, booting two nice goals along with 15 disposals, and he took a very nice mark over Christian Petrarca. He was also pretty good against the Dockers, recording a 100% disposal efficiency for the day. I hope to see him get more games next year as I believe he could provide solid ball use out of the midfield that we lack. Overall, he played very well in his two appearances, so I will give him a B-, minus, just because I would have liked him to break through a little earlier this season, but that's just me. I'm excited for 2024. Our mid-season draftee proved to be a very handy pickup. We obviously struggled to score a lot this season, and adding Ryan gave us a little boost in this area, particularly in that Collingwood win where he booted three goals. I expect him to be put through the weight room this offseason so we can hopefully see him clunk some contested marks and hit the scoreboard more consistently in 2024 alongside Mitch Lewis, Cozzy and the likes. I will give Big Ryan a B plus for his solid contributions late in the year. Alright Hawthorne fans, that was all of the players who received AFL game time in 2023. Let me know what you think of my grading in the comments. Keep in mind, this is just my opinion. So don't get too angry if I gave your favorite player a lower grade than what you expected. Hope to see you guys next time. Please leave a like and subscribe. See you guys in the next video.